Algebra word problems number 12a. Write, solve equations with like terms. Every once in a while I like to go back and discuss this again. So if you haven't seen my videos before, you know what I'm talking about. And if you had seen them, you're going to have this memorized and that can only help you. When we do word problems, we have to have a strategy. We need to read the problem, underline or encircle the important parts if that'll help us, make a plan to solve it. So we're going to choose an operation. We're going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. We're going to turn the unknown amounts into variables that make sense. We're going to ask ourselves, what is it asking us to solve? I can make a table or draw a diagram if it's still con too confusing. That'll help us sort things out. Then we can write the equation or the expression, find the solution or simplify the expression, and then check it by plugging it into the equation to see if it works and if the answer is right. So sometimes an equation needs to be simplified before we can start solving, like terms need to be put together. They need to be combined. When writing an equation from a word problem, we need to keep our eyes open for numbers standing alone or a variable multiplied by a coefficient. When a variable is in more than one term, the separate terms can be combined. And to combine them, we add or subtract the coefficients as it tells us to. So do you remember what a coefficient is? It's a number that's in front of a variable and if that variable leaves, then he's just a standalone number, okay? So, here's our problem. If we add one-third of a number to itself, we get 48. What is the number? All right, so we need to write an equation. So we think, we're adding one-third of a number. Well, that means adding is a plus sign. One-third, we write it in number form from the word form, and of a number could be either x or n or whatever variable we want to choose. So we'll choose x. So one-third of a number is plus one-third x. To itself means to that number. So we said the number was x, so we're going to say x. So now we're going to add x to one-third x. And it says we get 48. So that means it equals 48. So now we have our equation x plus one-third x equals 48. And we see like terms, don't we? See, there's an x here and an x there. Now remember, when there's a standalone variable, there is an invisible one in front of it, isn't there? We just don't write it because we can see there's one x. We don't need someone to tell us there's one x, but there is a one there and we can't forget that, okay? It's really important. So now we have x plus one-third x equals 48. That means, counting our invisible 1, we have 1x plus 1 third x. Well, we need to add the 1 and the 1 third. It tells us to. There's a plus sign right there. 1 plus 1 third is 1 and 1 third. So now we have 1 and 1 third x equals 48. Now we need to change that 1 and 1 third to an improper fraction to change it from a mixed number. We need to get rid of this mixed number, okay? So we need to change it to an improper fraction. And do you remember how to do that? We multiply the whole number by the denominator. 1 times 3 is 3. Then we add the numerator. That's a 4 now. And we put it over the original denominator. So now we have 4 thirds. So now we got rid of the mixed number. We turned it into an improper fraction. So now it's a fraction. We need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 4 thirds. Do you remember what a reciprocal is? Let's ask our little variable n here. To solve an equation with a fraction coefficient, you multiply each side by the reciprocal. And remember, when we invert a fraction, we flip it upside down, it's the reciprocal. One third is three over one. Do you remember what a coefficient is? The coefficient is the number in front of the variable. If the variable isn't there, then he's just a standalone number, okay? So to solve an equation with a fraction coefficient. If he was a fraction instead of an 8, we have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, the upside down version of that fraction. Okay, so we're back here and we've got 4 thirds x equals 48, so we need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So we split, we flip the 4 thirds upside down to 3 fourths, and we multiply this side by 3 fourths, and we multiply this side by 3 fourths. I put a 1 under the 48 because that'll still equal 48, but at least it makes it look like a fraction so I can multiply it easier, okay? So now, because we've got 3 fourths times 3 fourths, we've got 12 over 12, which equals 1. 
which means we're back to having 1x again. So that drops off, we discard it, okay? So now we've just got x equals 48 over 1 times 3 fourths. So now look at this. Do you remember how to cancel out? If we've got a 4 here and a 48 here, how many 4s can fit into that 48? Well, 4 times 12 is 48. So we can cancel this out as a 1 and cancel this out as a 12. That way we don't have to simplify so much when we're finished with our fraction. 12 times 3 is 36 over 1, which means x is 36. Okay? That wasn't too hard, was it? All right, we're going to do another one. All right? And I'm making a couple more videos after this one. This is 12a. I'm going to make 12b and 12c. That's going to have more explanations, okay, of combining like terms. So you're going to have lots of practice, all right? A 54p... Fo blah, let me try again, because I saw the two c's and I went crazy. A 54-foot piece of wire is cut into three pieces. The second piece is twice as long as the first piece. The third piece is three times as long as the second piece. How long is each piece? Wow, is that confusing if you read it fast? All right, but we're going to break it down into little pieces, okay? That's going to make it way easier. We're going to let P equal piece, because that makes sense, doesn't it? Remember, we need to turn the unknown amounts into variables that make sense. So P is going to be piece. It's going to be piece of wire. We could even have done W for wire, okay? But we're dealing in pieces, all right? So the first thing we've got is a 54 piece foot piece of wire is the total length, isn't it? That was the total length that was cut into three pieces. So we know if that was the total that it's going to equal 54. So now we've got equal 54, all right? Is cut into three pieces tells us there are three terms to the equation. And added together, they're going to equal 54. So it's telling us that we need to find those three pieces, right? So we've got something plus something plus something equals 54. All right, we're making some progress here. Now it says the second piece is twice as long as the first piece. Well, remember P equals piece. So now we've got a P in the first place, and the second piece is twice as long as it. Well, twice as much as something means two times something. So that means we've got a P and we've got a 2P. Now we just need this last one. The third piece is three times as long as the second. Three times means three, the number three, and as long as the second piece, well, the second piece is 2P, so that means our third one here is going to be three times the 2P, isn't it? So now we've got P plus 2P plus three times 2P equals 54, all right? Now we need to combine the like terms. Look at all these like terms. Look at all these P's here. So we know there's an invisible 1 in front of this one, so I put it there, okay? So that means we've got 1p plus 2p plus, we need to do this multiplication, don't we? 3 times 2 is 6, so that means we've got 6p. So how many p's do we have here? We've got 1, and 2 is 3, and 6 is 9. So now we've got 9p equals 54. Well, we divide both sides by 9 to isolate this p by itself on this side, and it's 9 times p, so we have to do the inverse of multiplication, so we do division. We divide both sides by 9. That makes this get canceled out and discarded, because 9 over 9 means 1. That means we just have 1p. So now p equals 54 over 9. We do the division. 9 times 6 is 54. So we know p is 6. Are we done? No, we're not, because we need to find the, the length of three pieces. So this is the length of the first piece. And do you remember that the second piece was 2p? That means 2 times 6. So the second piece is 12. And then the third piece was 6p. Remember, it was 3 times 2p? So it's 6p. Well, 6 times 6, because p is 6, is 36. So now we know the lengths are 6 feet, 12 feet, and 36 feet. Was that real bad? Was that really hard? I hope I explained it well enough. We're going to do some more examples, so hopefully you'll completely understand the combining of like terms by the time we're finished doing the number 12 videos, okay? So this is 12a. I hope to see you 12b, and 
We'll discuss this some more, and you'll really understand it hopefully when I'm done. Okay? Keep trying. Keep up the good work. I'll see ya. Bye.